Music is at the heart of the Lees family. They've never questioned their children's tuition. As rent and expenses went up, they made a tough decision. We had to sit down together and discuss about cutting back extracurricular activities like gymnastics, swimming and even art classes. And it was a huge sacrifice for our family. We chose music. But many families can no longer continue lessons as they battle the rising cost of living. I just found that it's just not a priority at the moment. People are barely getting by. A drop in participation is forcing teachers like Katrina Pingnam to rethink their careers. I have actually considered um, alternative sources of income. It's getting quite tight um, at the moment. The Melbourne Youth Orchestra this year had a record number of pleas for financial help. More and more families are telling us that mortgage stress and the rising cost of living are making it harder and harder to pay for music lessons and music education. National data shows children's participation in most creative activities declined between 2017 and 2022. The number of kids singing or playing an instrument fell from 23% to 19%. COVID hit during that time, but the music sector believes financial pressure is playing a part. Dr Jason Goopy from the Australian Society for Music Education is calling for a national scheme to fund music teachers in all schools. This will ensure that it doesn't matter where you live or what family you're born into, you actually get a chance to receive a music education. The government this week announced new payments for teaching students on practical placements, something it hopes will help aspiring music teachers. The future of the Australian music industry is in peril. The likes of ACDC, John Farnham, Guy Sebastian, Amy Shark, Baker Boy, these will be names of the past. Talent the country can't afford to lose over cost. Emily Lawrence, ABC News.